What's going on, 2A crew? It's Rizzo, and today we're going to talk about IFACs. These aren't IFACs. We're going to talk about them. <laughs> Alright, so what is an IFAC? EDC IFAC is basically a individual first aid kit. And it's uh, something that's meant to be pretty small. Uh, maybe like this. That's my first. I got a couple of them in a first aid kit. This is my trauma kit that we're going to go over today. So just a, basically a small... Um, first aid kit that you can uh, carry with you to kind of take care of uh, small issues like, uh, I don't know, small burns, uh, insect bites, headaches, uh, cuts, things like that. Uh, individual first aid kit is basically uh, even something as small as, as that. That's probably like the size because you want to do something that you're going to carry with you um, every day. Um, so I, 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 I I keep both of these. These are just big, my medical bag. This one, they just got a bunch of stuff I don't need. This is, keep a lot of stuff I need in this one. Um, that's my trauma kit. That's kind of what we're going to go over today. Uh, individual IFAC for uh, trauma kit. This is not something you're going to carry on a belt. So, um, in a belt or a pocket, it's how you kind of want to carry it. Maybe something this size. Uh, this may be too big, but this is what I always take with me to the range so I have all this stuff in the car and then when I go to the range I'll take out my trauma uh, my trauma kit so that's kind of what we're going with. over the day we're going to discuss uh our fact and how important it is to uh, carry something with you every day uh, almost like um a firearm <clears throat> it's something you want to carry every day and hope you never use same thing with your fact you want to carry it every day but you hope you never have to use it and you probably will I'm using for like, let's say, a little small stuff. You'll probably, uh, even if you're a gun owner, you'll use your IFAC uh, more than you would use your uh, your gun, hopefully. All right, All right so what we're going to do today, just kind of go over what you need to keep in your uh, IFAC. And like I said, I'm going to do like a, a trauma kit IFAC. I actually just uh, got this one so it's new. We'll open it up and look inside so you can see. Um, a lot of times, we'll look through all of them with these IFACs. You can bust by them and just use what's inside. Or you can add um, your own stuff and kind of personalize it. So I'm going to just kind of go over this one, personalize, and just show um, the things that I think you should have in every uh, IFAC kit. All right, so remember, it's not, in my opinion, it's not just enough just to have an IFAC. You need to get you some, uh, some training. Um, at the very least, get a first aid and a CPR class. Um, you can maybe take a TCC class, a stop the bleed class, especially if you're dealing with firearm. Uh, stop the bleed, stop the bleed, stop the bleed class will be very important because you never know when you may be um, hit with a tra traumatic injury. Um, usually, uh, one thing I want to add, with the IFAC individual first aid kit, I always tell people that you build your IFAC for you if something happens to you. Um, and then um, if you want to have another kit for if you use for something, if you run into an incident with somebody else, you can help them. But you know, try to build your IFAC out. If something happens to you, you got the uh, necessary stuff on hand to take care of you um, in a traumatic injury or anything like that. All right, so what should go inside your IFAC? Well, depending on um, how you're going to do what you're going to carry, you need to figure out how much you can actually carry uh, every day. All right, so I got everything I need in here but I can't realistically carry something like that around every day. So I just keep like the basics in here. Uh, um, Band-aids, uh, alcohol pads, um, got some scissors in there, sting relief from a bee uh, bite, uh, emergency thermal blankets, some shears, some little small shears. It's just a little basic stuff that you know would fit on the belt or in the pocket or somewhere so you can just kind of carry around with you uh, all the time. This is a bigger one with kind of more stuff in it, but still, like I say, you can't really um, carry this around with you every day. And I like this one. It's just kind of marked with like the different things in here. Um, thermal blanket, uh, first aid, uh, booklet, uh, bandages, uh, gloves, all that stuff in there. So, but... We're going to talk about um, trauma kits. So, um, basically, the things I think, and I don't want to forget anything, so let me make sure I got it wrote down. You need to have tourniquet, <laughs> hemostatic gauze, uh, bandages, alcohol pads, ibuprofen, uh, aspirin, something like that, and some uh, gloves. So, what I'm going to do is just go through my pack, like I just bought it. We'll see what's inside. 
and then we'll see uh, what if anything that we need to add to it. All right, let's check it out. So got this kit. We're gonna open it up. It's gonna be my trauma kit. Um, I have one. I just I'm getting another one to take to the range. Um, and I like this one. Comes with all your stuff here is pre-packaged. You got uh, pockets here to kind of carry uh, if you're you know out on the range. You're doing something different. Uh, Molly pockets. Little things in here. You can put different stuff in. So yeah, it's a lot of stuff in there. So let's look inside and see what we got. So the first thing I said we need to have is a tourniquet, and it does have a tourniquet. Uh, one thing I would always recommend is when you have your stuff in here, go ahead and, and, and take it out of the plastic and put it where it needs to go. Let me cut this open. I got some shears in the big one. And I always like to recommend using a cat tourniquet. We'll do a video uh, in the future uh, about how to use the cat tourniquet. Be a, I like to use a good, a good <clears throat> cat tourniquet. This is a couple of places. Be careful about these things on Amazon. Even with this one, I got this one here, but I'll probably, I got plenty of extra ones, so I'll probably use some of the better ones I have. Um, inside my kit and a lot of people a lot of people will store have these even separately just store them on the belt uh, by itself but make sure if you're a firearms owner one of the main things you want to have in your trauma kit is a tourniquet this is like first and foremost uh, before you do anything else uh, get a tourniquet all right so next we said you want to have some kind of uh, hemostatic gauze and basically in here we got what we call like a uh, Israeli bandage, uh, trauma wound dressing, and this this is good. You know, I, I don't I don't I don't mind these. These aren't bad, but I prefer to use. Let's add some kit. Uh, quick clot. Uh, quick clot. Uh, just something to kind of um, stop bleeding a lot quicker. So I like to use quick clot. So I'm gonna take it from my, my my big bag and put it inside my personal trauma kit here so I can have that but I these really bad these aren't bad I got a whole bunch of these um they're good they wrap tight uh you can use them for a lot of different things pressure bandages and stuff like that so um but I, I like the, the hemostatic I like to use the quick quick clot quick clot is expensive though um so getting these may be a nice little uh substitute so let's see what else we got here. we got uh Things. We can got some shears in here. These aren't bad, but you always want to make sure you got a pair of good ones. So just make sure you got something that can cut. These seem to be pretty. These seem to be pretty good. So some nice shears in there. I didn't add shears on my list, but shears is an important thing to have inside your um, your eye pack. All right. So let's see. What we got some bandages or some stuff in here. Um, this one got, uh, and most of them will have the little uh, emergency mylar blanket. It's just kind of a blanket to, uh, somebody's cold, just kind of warm them up, keep them warm. So that's a good thing to have. Not mandatory, but it is a good thing to have in there. It got a whistle in there. I guess that's a whistle to kind of call for uh, attention. I'll let somebody know that somebody hurts. Um, it's another thing that I have on the list are uh, alcohol pads. These are just great to have in your kit. So uh, I already said I got the tourniquet. I got my hemostatic gauze, my quick clot. I'm gonna put a bunch of uh, alcohol pads in here. Alcohol pads are uh, great to have in there. Yep. So alcohol pads are a great thing to have. Be steamed, you know, little cuts, bruises, things like that. Alcohol pads are great for that. Now uh, this one also has the little mouth breathing thing, <laughs> mouth breathing thing on it. CPR. If you need to do CPR, um, having something like this where you don't actually have to put, you know, you just kind of take it out, put this over the person's face, and then you kind of breathe through there. So that is a nice thing to have. Like I said, you can put all kind of whatever you want to put inside your kit. I told you the main things I think you ought to have in there, so I missed, um, I got ibuprofen, aspirin, whatever you want to use. This is my eye fat. I like to use leaves, so that's what I'm going to put in there. I actually keep in my uh, 
big one, I keep a big bottle of uh, aspirin in there. Um, this is just basically if I uh, need to help somebody else with something, I'll put that in there. Um, sterile pads, gauze pads, those are great to have. So we'll came with it, we'll put the gauze pads in there. And It's got like the little um, splint type deal. And this is a good thing to have. I got I got a lot <laughs> of those. Um, so there wasn't nothing I really needed to have. But like I said, whatever comes with it, I'm going to keep it in there. Not just add. Now this one, I showed y'all the smaller kit that came with the glove. This one doesn't come with uh, gloves. So I'm going to add my own little set of nitride gloves to it. Yeah, it's just nice to, if you're dealing with somebody that's bleeding um, or anything, yeah, it's just nice to have um, the gloves. And, and also another recommendation, I said get the cat tourniquet. Um, try to get two if you can. And, and like I said, take training to make sure you know how to, um, how to, how to properly apply, apply the tourniquet. We'll be doing some, more. like I said, we'll do a video soon on how to properly apply uh, a tourniquet. Make sure I got everything. So that's like um, all the stuff that came with this kit. Only thing I needed to add was uh, I added me uh, some leave um, and I added the nitrile gloves that didn't come with that. But everything else uh, was in there. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. Bandages. Um, individual first aid kit should have bandages. And I got some in my bigger bag. I'll put some in the smaller bag. Just Bandages to me are great. Um, like I say, it's my trauma kit, so I use that for quote unquote big stuff, but yeah, I'm gonna add some bandages to it. And well, no, this is my big kit, CPR. Bro. <laughs> CPR resuscitator mask, you don't really need that, but like I said, I just keep, I keep a lot of stuff just in case, you know, I do a lot of shooting, so I got my eye fact for me, hopefully it'll be a, a, a small injury or something, but I do keep a lot of stuff that I may, um, or may not need, like I said, I got a lot of the Israeli bandages, I keep a bunch of those, um, the gauze, the uh, ace bandage wrap, Got a lot of these little four blankets. They come with a lot of different kits, but that's why I say yeah, be careful with kits you buy on Amazon. Uh, the stuff on there may be what you need, but it may not be the quality uh, that you need. So just kind of be careful buying stuff on Amazon. I also have, I'm gonna add, let's see what I got here. Come on. And these are the little like, uh, if you gotta cut the little strips, you kind of put over the cuts to kind of help close them up. And then I got uh, a couple other kind of bandages, fast healing. Uh, so I'm gonna grab a couple of those. Yeah, and these are just gel bandages. So I'm gonna add a couple of gel bandages and a couple of bandages. One, two of these uh, <clears throat> strips, <clears throat> bag of strips. So I'm gonna just add that to my kit. Like I said, I got the main things I want in there, just other this stuff. And, and one thing you always wanna remember also is, look through your kit, <clears throat> I don't say occasion, more than occasion, because you kinda wanna remember where everything is. One thing you don't wanna be doing, if you're in a situation is trying to search and see where all your stuff is. So just kind of go through your kit, uh, know what you got. Uh, so like I said, most important thing is uh, tourniquet, uh, hemostatic gauze, um, bandages, alcohol pads, ibuprofen or whatever kind of um, <clears throat> pills you want to use in nitrile gloves. Those are kind of like the most important thing. The other stuff are just kind of stuff that to me is Important, but you don't necessarily have to have. Oh, let's see. See, I got a bunch of stuff over here I do not need. I got a thermometer, um, adhesive, 
adhesive. What I got here? I got a bunch of tourniquets. Uh, tourniquets can be expensive, about thirty dollars a piece, but it's nice to have them. Um, uh, I be not I be posting. It burns, so yeah. Neil's corn. It burns and stuff like that. I got a um, baby, not a baby, blood pressure kit. So yeah, but that's this type of stuff, and you can figure out what you want in yours. But I think those six things are um, the most important things that you need to have in your um, iPad. All right, so we're gonna wrap it up, but that's uh, kind of what I think you need to have in your iFAC, uh, those items, and also take, uh, start with the uh, basic first aid class, get you a, a CPR class and a stop and bleed, I think. If you are gonna be a, uh, a gun on a shooter, I, I think those are three classes that you should take. Uh, and a lot of times you can find those classes free of charge. So go out, um, get your IFAC, get some training, medical training, and, uh, and stay safe, all right? <laughs> we'll talk to you guys later.